Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the accounting rate of return known as the ARR and the average accounting return AAR. What are these two ARR and AAR? Well, they are a capital budgeting tool. What does that mean? It means they help you evaluate whether you should undertake a project or not. Evaluate investment opportunities. Evaluate a business opportunity, a new plan, a new expansion plan, a new, a new machinery, a new expansion internationally. Just like MPV, IRR, payback, and the discounted payback. They are used to assess whether you should undertake a project or don't undertake this project. Well, ARR and average accounting rate of return. Well, they are similar in the reliance on accounting. Notice in both rate, in both computation, we have the word accounting, and this is important. We're going to have to explain this. They don't rely on cash flow. So one of their weaknesses is, just simply put, right from the get-go, they are not cash flow. When I say cash flow, NPV uses cash flow, IRR uses cash flow, payback uses cash flow, discounted payback uses cash flow. These computation these ratios use accounting figures and this is one of their weaknesses and we'll explain why later on and they differ in their computation and perspective and this is what we'll what we'll discuss in this session let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com hello my name is farhat you are here because you are either an accounting student a finance student or someone who's studying for their CMA or CPA exam. Great, you are looking for some additional help and we can help you. I strongly encourage you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com. I offer additional lectures, resources, including PowerPoint slides, multiple choice questions, in some circumstances, exercises, and true-false questions. Our material is aligned with your CPA review courses, with your CMA review courses, with your college courses. I offer a risk-free trial that you can try to find out whether my website can help you or not. If you find it helpful, you subscribe, you keep your subscription. If not, you cancel and your risk is free. If you like this recording, if you like my lectures, you would like what's on the website, give me a chance to help you with your college courses as well as professional certification. I hope to see you on the website. Starting with what is the accounting rate of return or, or ARR? Well, it's also known as the simple rate of return. Maybe in your textbook, they might call it something different. Measures the project profitability by comparing the annual incremental additional net income to initial investment. So what they do is this, they would say, okay, we undertook this project. How much did this project generated in revenues? How much did this project generated incur in expenses? Those are incremental. So without this project, this additional revenue, additional expenses did not exist. Then we compare that to how much the project cost us. So IRR provide a straightforward way to evaluate whether a project meets a company required rate of return. So ARR, you will take the incremental, not net income, the incremental net income, the annual one, dividing it by the initial investment. It focuses on the incremental, evaluate the additional income generated by the project after accounting for expenses and depreciation. So in your textbook, in your homework, on your exam, you have to be careful. When we say net income, net income is the result of revenues, minus expenses and all what we count is the additional the incremental revenues and expenses that are part of this project it's a straightforward computation it usually uses the figures right from the financial statements which is easier for managers and if the calculated arr exceeds the company's required rate of return rrr the project is considered viable let's look at an example Imagine a company is considering a software system costing 100000 expected to generate an additional 20000 in incremental net income annually. Let's use the formula. Incremental net income divided by the investment. We have an ARR of 20%. Is this acceptable? Well, it all depends on our required rate of return. If it's below, this is a good. If our required rate of return is 25, we will reject. 
So what is the average accounting return? AAR. Well, the average accounting return also measures the profitability, but it does so by dividing the project average net income. So we don't look at one year. We don't look at this annually. We look at the whole project over its life and we'll divide that number by the average book value of the asset that we used. So this approach provide a broader view by incorporating changes in the book value of the investment over time. So it looks at how much did this project generated in net income over its lifespan, not for one particular year or how much it's going to on average, divide them by the average book value. So the best way to illustrate this is to first look at the formula, then we'll work an example, average net income, average book value. Now what's the book value? The book value is the cost minus any accumulated depreciation of the asset. So AAR uses average for both net income and book value reflecting profitability over the project lifespan. Now similar to ARR, it relies on net income and it relies on book value. Both of these figures are accounting and that's that's their weakness, their accounting figures. Why? We're gonna see why accounting is not cash. Accounting is accrual. Accrual. Accrual means you are using estimates, you are using allowances, you are using reserves. And managers can manipulate those figures real easily. Project with a AAR exceeding the company's target rate will be accepted. Let's look at an example. Suppose a company invests half a million in a project for a five-year lifespan. The net income is over five years is 250. So here's net income in year one, year two, 150. Year one is 100. Year two, 150, that's 250. Year three, 300, uh, sorry, 300. Then in year five, they lose 50. You'll, you'll go back to 250. Therefore, 250,000 over five years, the average income over the life of this project is 50,000 per year. That's the average. The average book value, we invested half a million and they say we don't have anything. Half a million plus the other average is zero. The other factor plus zero divided by two equal to 250. Now we can take 50 divided by 250. The AAR is 20%. Do we accept? Do we reject? It all depends on the company's acceptable. Is this acceptable to the company? Is 20% acceptable or not? This is a summary of everything that we just did. A AAR used the incremental net income per year. AAR used the average net income over the life of the project. The time frame, it focuses on annual profitability. It considered the lifespan of the project. The perspective, it's year by year. This is a broader lifespan of the project. AAR, AAR, ARR compare ARR to the required rate of return. This compares AAR to a target. This is how much they want to target for this project. Let's take a look at their strength and limitation. Well, strength, their simplicity. They both easy to compute. They rely on similar financial matrix like net income and book value. Limitation, the first one is time value of money is ignored. They focus on accounting matrix. And I kept saying that's a problem. Why is that a problem? Because accounting figures are generated from accrual. Revenue is an accrual. Um, depreciation expense is a non-cash expense. Bad debt expense is a non-cash expense. Um, you, can, you can create reserve as expenses to reduce income or you can increase or decrease those reserves to manipulate net income. So results can vary depending on accounting policies, such as depreciation method, inventory method, so on and so forth. And this is the biggest weakness in those two methods. When to use a P a -R -R and a -A -R? Well, it's a quick way to evaluate a project, but at the end of the day, if you want a comprehensive analysis, what do we do? NPV with or IRR or together, which incorporate cash flows over time using the time value of money. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, look at additional resources that's going to help you whether you are an accounting student, a finance student, or studying for a professional certification. Invest in yourself. Farhat is always here to help.